very good morning afternoon and evening to one and all who have gathered over here i would like to officially welcome miss prithvi pai ma'am thank you so much for joining in and i know it's a late evening there uh, thank you for being part of our inaugural program also welcome you ma'am thank you so much thank you so much ma'am so with your permission shall we officially start off this session ma'am yes go great ahead. great ma'am okay a very good morning again uh, to one and all gathered here this is don prakash assistant professor sgm college of business management post graduate center for management studies and research mangalore i am honored to be moderating this technical session number 1 i am also very happy that our director dr seema s senor ma'am has joined us for this technical session number 1 so i think we can all clap virtually right great okay it gives me great privilege to welcome our very dynamic resource person for today who's going to jump start and kick start this wonderful two day conference her name is miss prithvi pai who is presently working as tax operations and technology senior at uber usa and has been doing an amazing work we welcome you officially ma'am thank you it's an honor and um, pleasure to be here and presenting to all of you today great ma'am thank you so much i would also like to welcome again our dynamic director dr seema chennai ma'am for uh, having this program and making all our budding youngsters in and around our country uh, get more information and knowledge on this wonderful topic so i welcome you ma'am thank you don thank you everyone yes the welcome also extends to all my dear colleagues my mba students the future business leaders and all the wonderful participants who have joined us right from various parts of the globe so a warm welcome to one and all lastly i would also like to welcome one and all who have directly or indirectly pa being part of this particular program so i'm sure you are all eagerly waiting to hear from miss prithvi pai before that i would like to just give a brief introduction about our dynamic uh, speaker she is an mba in hr specialization and she has done that in justice case hegde institute of management and then proceeded to do masters of science in taxation in golden gate university after which she went on to do compensation and benefits tax in bdo after which she joined kpmg as us corporate direct tax state and local tax advisor upon which now she is currently working as a us corporate direct tax global tax operations and technology partner for uber usa with such a great profile and person with very humble modest profile she has sent to us she has a very big profile but she insisted on us just trying to touch up on only few important points so with this i welcome you once again ma'am and the session is officially over to you ma'am thank you thank you uh, don prakash for yes. the introduction and Pleasure, uh, good um, morning just before you start i have your powerpoint ma'am with your permission i will be switching yes, the slides please. let me know as and when you want me to switch the slides you yeah sure thank you yes ma'am and participants a quick update for you all we have a very dynamic personality as i just introduced so please make sure that you ask whatever possible relevant questions possible so you can always drop your question on the text box on the google meet and in case you have joined us from youtube you can drop in your questions on the youtube if you want to ask a question directly kindly wait for the question answer session with ma'am's permission we will be allowing each of you to be asking the questions but please keep in mind dear participants we'll manage our time so that uh, you have to ask your questions as and when you get it so ma'am i'm just going to present your ppt yeah thank you and i'll uh, make sure i'll have some time for q and a at the end great ma'am thank you okay let's get started so good morning good afternoon and good evening to everyone as i know people have joined from a uh, different time zone so thank you for that and if you all know i went to justice k sekde institute of management before that i went to mahatma gandhi memorial college but i didn't want to put my um, you know entire education there so i kept it short well mangalore is very close to my heart because i was born and brought up in urpi and i do visit there every time i come to india so it's a really a great honor and um, privilege to be presenting to all of you i was a student just like you at one point of time so it feels really good right now okay 
So when I was asked to present at this conference, several ideas crossed my mind. Should I talk about the industry specific impact related to the ride sharing, the delivery industry like Uber, or talk about tax changes and incentives? Or should I put like cool graphs and metrics on the impact of COVID-19? And then I thought, why not share my own experience and experience of our global team on what a journey it has been staying connected virtually. I still remember this day very clearly in the office. It was March 10, 2020. We were just finishing up a meeting in the afternoon and we all get an email saying that, hey, to avoid the spread of virus, everyone is encouraged to work from home for the next few days. That was so initial. We had just heard about this virus in China, but nobody knew it was a pandemic. Okay, initially everyone thought, okay, this would be a matter of a couple of weeks. And soon though that week, before even we realized we were in the pandemic, COVID-19 pandemic disrupted labor markets globally. It meant to be a two week thing and ended up to be like 18 plus months and still continues. It came sudden and hit like a tsunami. It wasn't the same as any other recession that we had faced. There was a recession we faced in 2009 and before that in 2000 when, when I was still um, in college. So th it, this was nothing close to that. that. And it was all so sudden. The consequences were sudden and so severe. Millions of people were furloughed or lost jobs as a lot of non-essential business were forced to close for safety of everyone. And this happened worldwide. It was not just one or two countries. Others were trying to get adjusted to the new remote way of working. The frontline workers worked in hospitals and grocery stores, in farms, warehouses, putting their risk at life every day to serve others. As most of us can relate, the initial struggle was hard on everyone. And especially for us, staying far from homeland, it was even worse. It was not just about working from home or getting kids adjusted to online learning. It was much more than that. The fear which we never faced before. What if something happens to us? What will happen to our kids? Who's going to take care of them? Or living far from the homeland, we felt so helpless when we heard news of sickness and death from extended families and friends. The travel restrictions and ban only made it more worse and the uncertainty was unknown and there was no sight in place of when the travel ban would be lifted. It was hard to explain to kids why suddenly they were denied from going to school meeting their friends, playing a sport, or going swimming. The story was part of every household. On the work front, everyone was getting accustomed and adjusted to the new way of working remotely. The digital tools were effective, allowing us to communicate, collaborate, manage projects, or even brainstorm without even being together in some place. Before the pandemic, these tools were nice to have or occasional remote work or when we had to work with our colleagues in different countries. But now they had established themselves as essential. In the beginning, everyone felt that they had to over communicate. Like we would have pretty much meetings every, every minute of the day. Like I wouldn't even have like a lunch break sometimes to make sure the projects were getting done and timelines were being met. It was easy to whiteboard an issue in the office, but the same thing became so hard being online. We would be in meetings pretty much all day and catch up on work later in the evening, plus take care of the family at the same time. By the end of the day, we would feel what's called a Zoom fatigue. That's, that's actually a term that was being used. We were all getting too caught up in technology and losing sight of human element, which we would otherwise have if we were in the office. The chats by the water coolers, by coffee machines, eating lunch at cafeteria, talking about um, the movies or family vacations or anything or ha helping just a colleague troubleshoot some ideas just over lunch. Now, the only time we communicated was when, when it was related to work. We didn't know how to add any social element to it. We just became like robots. Soon everyone realized this was not sustainable and mental wellness or health became more important than ever. Everyone was facing this globally in one way or the other. We even saw like jokes around WhatsApp. I mean, it, it came as a joke, but it was the consequences were really severe on everyone's health. A best practice for the company became to do constant check-ins and surveys to make sure they heard and addressed the issues. They encouraged employees to take some well-deserved time off to unwind like they would if they were working in the office. Uh, can you change the slide, please? The next one. Sorry, the next one. Yeah, here. Um, while there's much to mourn from the last year, there's also a lot we learned. I'm sure everyone will agree to that. It definitely taught us a lot of experiences and lessons that made our lives more compassionate, more meaningful, both professionally and personally. 
The company introduced a bunch of wellness programs such as virtual meditation, yoga, fitness challenges, listening sessions, access to health apps, anything that helped us calm our mind and be physically fit. And to aid in the value of uninterrupted dedicated work time, company-wide no meeting days were introduced where you could just focus and just get the important task accomplished with no dis disruptions. There were employee resources groups. There's always employee resource group, but now they played like a major role. There were parent groups, which gave lists of resources that you could get, get through the days. Having kids at home, there were like no help around. Women at Uber who helped the women to get around any issues they had, or, you know, just you need like another woman to listen to your stories, to vent or any issues they had. There were, there were always people to help you. Asia Pacific groups, LATAM groups, fireside chats with various professionals, etc. We even had a company wide chat channel, which was specifically dedicated for COVID-19. And this was on regional levels where we helped each other with the families to get like any medical or oxygen help devices and later on with the vaccination sites. So the whole company kind of like became more like a family now than just just colleagues working across each other. The care, the care packages were sent home. We introduced something called a random coffee chat where we would just get paired with someone from a cross-functional team and you could just talk, chat about anything. It need not be work. If you want to talk about work, we could talk about work, but it went about like reading a favorite book or like somebody's personal skill set or somebody's favorite food. It could be anything and anything under the sun. It was just a random like fun chat. On some Friday evenings to end the week, it was a fun check-in to see what everyone's desk at home looked like. So we know by Friday, everyone is exhausted and you know it's a mess. So it was fun to see who is more messier than the other. And then it was uh, also that, you know we would have things like, okay, what would be like uh, something that is very sentimental or significant to you at your home, like sharing stories about that. So that's how we try to unwind and end the week uh, on Fridays. And then we would like have birthday cards and anniversaries in the office. We'd know everyone would sign from the team and just get a small birthday cake and we would celebrate. Being virtual, that was not possible. But you know, people always come with ideas. Though there are companies that come with like innovative things. And so we were introduced to something called a CUDA board where you could just go online and just like put memes or put like GIFs or whatever you wanted and congratulate or wish that person and it actually became like a fun little thing to see what everyone had to like write to that person or how they felt about that person uh, we also made sure that our families were not left out so virtual family time with the kids and even with the pets it was it was good for our families to see each other and talk about like you know the kids would share their um things like what they did uh, for their Halloween or uh, something like that. They always had like something to chat about. Pre-pandemic, we would also go on like team together to celebrate our finance quarter ends or our year ends or major milestones. This took a different turn when we had sheltered in place. Thanks to our employee morale community, they came up with innovative ideas where our teams in San Francisco were able to attend a cooking class that with a chef from Italy. We also took like a music concert from UK, a virtual escape room where we had fun playing against different cross-functional teams. Before the pandemic, the communication with our global teams were always short and mostly related to the specific projects that we worked with them. And because of the time difference, there was not much room for socialization or to be involved in the regional specific projects as some of them require travel and to be in a particular office. Since everyone was now working from home and didn't have to spend the time commuting to work, we could utilize that time to participate in meetings or just listening to all hands for, from the other regions, especially like, you know, in the mornings, I would just wake up with my coffee, sit with my coffee and just listen to what's happening in Asia or, you know, what's happening in Latin America. In the evenings, I would just be uh, with the, my Middle Eastern or European colleagues. So it was always fun to see what's happening everywhere. It was amazing to collaborate and work on projects collectively. We were able to learn from each other so much. It allowed teams to experience some of the camaraderie of each office wherever they were, like how different offices, how different culture we all adopt living in different countries. Month of October to December is always kind of like a fun thing here. 
And usually in month of October or November, where we have our workshops where we call it as a summit, we all get together and have team presentations, celebrate our achievements. We have a listening session from our industry leaders. Because the size of the teams, we usually have it at our regional level. We don't travel to other countries or we used to in the beginning, like people would come here or we would go and um, have it in different countries because of the team size. Now it ended up to be regional. But last year in 2020, we were able to extend this, not just at our regional US level, but on a global scale, at a global level. As anyway, we were all remote and getting on, you know, Zoom or Teams or Google Link. It was good to see presentations from colleagues ranging from India, Amsterdam, Brazil, Japan, and hear about the phenomenal work the team had done and accomplished being remote. The accomplishments were just mind blowing. It made it even more clear that good work ethics, strong teams with talented, smart people can achieve anything. On the last day of the summit, we included social events such as Halloween costume contest, best decorated cookies, etc. I have a slide on that after this slide, if you want to see what it looked like to dress up on the Zoom. It was fun to have the whole global team participate and enjoy the creativity. It was good to socially know the colleagues, their families, their hobbies, their culture, something that we would have otherwise not connected if we were all working in our individual offices. We were also able to get out of the office-centric culture and incorporate people from other geographies in our projects. Somebody sitting in Amsterdam was able to work on a US corporate tax. I would know how VAT works in UK. We got the opportunity to be involved in various projects and work on them from the comfort of home. We even learned a lot of new um, uh, skills, like uh, I don't know if any of you have heard something called Altrix, that's something very similar to Excel, but it is much more capable than Excel. So we, we kind of like shared and had like sessions where we would all learn together. We would take like online course together to learn something new. In fact, I transitioned to my new team during the pandemic. I used to work like being like a very core tax person who did like tax returns and did like quarterly filings and yearly filings. But I also did some projects like, you know, implementing and automating some new systems for tax department. That got me really interested in FinTech and technology side of it. I started attending presentations from my colleagues in the FinTech tax technology team, took a few online courses, assisted in projects and spoke to my leaders about making a move as this was something I was passionate about and wanted my career heading that way staying in tax at the same time, but diversifying being like in technology side of it. When the opportunity opened up in the team, I applied for the role and was able to transition and onboard with ease. Moving to a new job or trying something new and that too in a virtual world is not easy, especially not easy if you have not never experienced working in an office environment. We were able to extend internship even in the remote work environment to college students and made sure they were well supported throughout the process. As a newcomer, there are always inhibitions like, what if I have questions? Where should I save the file? Is an information confidential? Or do I ask, ask, who do I ask for a particular system access? So we introduced what's called a buddy system, where a new hire on an intern was assigned a friend or a buddy who would get guidance and share their experience. For the more experienced team members, it was like, you know, getting a good way of how to guide a newcomer. The more experienced team also joined to provide mentorship and check-ins. Even though the experience would have been different coming into the office, it was absolutely still valuable to them as now they had visibility into how global teams worked and made for their rewarding experience. These are some of the examples that prove that old rules of what makes a great team still apply whether you're remote or not. You can't build a culture if you don't have trust, accountability, or mutual respect for each other. And this is true irrespective of what uh, profession you are in or if you are you know, still in, in school studying something or in the college. Maybe in the future, we will find more innovative ways to have meaning more human, uh, you know, meaningful human uh, interactions globally and how much connections correlate with our workplace morale. On the personal front, it taught our kids valuable lessons about helping people and to be helpful, grateful, and thankful for what they have. To put it in perspective, one of our neighbors is an elderly couple. In, the early 90s, in their early 90s, 
they were used to going out every single day and shopping the traditional way. They, they had their daily routine. They were not used to the modern way of online ordering or being on the phone and watching TV. That was not the lifestyle they led. When the whole shelter in place took place, they felt helpless. They didn't know what to do. They were now stuck at home and didn't know how to get their medicines or their necessities or the groceries. So we in the neighborhood shared a list of our contacts to these elderly disabled people at risk who we could help. We put the kids in you know, place for this. We told them that, hey, this will be your weekly project where the neighbors would write a list on the paper and leave it outside the door. And the kids would place the orders from them using our phones to get the necessities delivered. The kids in the neighborhood took turns and this showed them what a teamwork is, what it means to help people in need. The school fundraisers became in, before pandemic involved fun fairs at school, book exhibitions, etc. And now we had to think outside the box. We have parents at school who come from diverse backgrounds from various parts of the world. The Parent Teacher Association came up with this amazing idea of why not do something fun, but also educational, where we could all learn from each other and also raise some money. And what's the best way other than by food, right? Everyone loves food. So we had an international cook-off cook -off during the summer break where every weekend a parent would teach how to make a dish from the country or the culture they came from, the authentic way, and give some facts about it. it trust me, it was so different than me looking at YouTube and looking for a recipe and cooking it myself. We were all like cooking alongside, talking to each other, listening to beautiful stories, different cultures, and what it meant for them and how much they miss their family. We all share pretty much the same sentiments, no matter, matter which background we came from. I even had the opportunity to teach how to make some Indian food. Like if you are interested to know, I taught them how to make dal, coconut chutney, and aloo gobi, and talked about the, how the food differs in various parts of India. It was amazing to see the enthusiasm from both the parents and kids. And I still get a smile on my face sometimes because I get text messages from parents saying that, hey, today I made aloo gobi and my son loves it. He keeps asking me to make that again and again. So it's something that, something that you know, I brought a smile on somebody's face. So it's kind of um, fun to get such text message when you're tired and end of the day, you made a day. Every day news channel showed how the people were risking their life as frontline workers, first responders or essential workers to serve the society. So the arts and craft at school during the pandemic involved making colorful greeting cards to the healthcare and the essential workers, making masks. The teacher parents volunteered to take a lead to mail them out to the hospitals. We could see the kids do it so wholeheartedly where they meant a real thank you to these workers it became more clearer that we should do more to protect, respect, and appreciate the people we interact with on a daily basis, no matter who that is. Maintaining great relationship and connections can be done remotely. You don't have to see that person, and we all proved that in pandemic. There's never been a better time to take advantage of social media or the technology around us. I remember when, and Dr. Seema can probably relate to me as well, when we had to submit our projects, we had to wait in line at the computer lab to get a slot to, so that we can research. And then after that, to take the printouts, we had to still wait. And then we had to go to like a copier machine to make copies. Now you have that with the click of a button on your handheld phones or your personal laptops. The interviews when we, had, we were you know, in college had to happen in person and you had no clue about who to connect with or who to talk to, or what the experience is going to be look like. We didn't have good technology or LinkedIn back then. Technology has surely made everything so small and the globe and globalized for sure. Uh, a lot of you here will be starting your professional journey soon or enhancing your career. I would highly, highly encourage you to make use of the resources, make connections, reach out, invest in continuous learning, do internships. I still remember one of the first advice I got when I started my career was always grab a seat at the table and don't hesitate to ask questions, meaning don't shy away from asking questions. You should always take a risk. If you have a question in mind, that means someone else in the room also has that same question. So you just ask that way you're helping yourself and others. 
always look for mentors in life. Like it can be anyone. It can be somebody from your family. It can be your teachers. It can be a friend. It can be a cousin or it can be somebody from an industry. It can be anyone. So make sure you have as many mentors as you have in your life. And for different reasons, you have kind of somebody when you want to make some you know, personal decisions, you can have somebody to give you, guide you with your career. One of my mentors with my career is a person that I met at my first job at BDO. He was a senior manager back then, but I got real advice, real good advice on how to lead. I mean, he told me where, where I was doing wrong it was not nice to hear when, I mean, it's all you always want to hear good things about you, but he made sure I heard some bad things about myself too, so that I would improve on where I should improve. And I'm so thankful for that because I am here today because I followed those guidelines and he's all, he's still my mentor and he went on to become a VP and now he's a CFO, but still humble and we still keep in touch. And, you know, um, so always make sure you have good mentors in your life. I hope that things really come back to normal soon, but the lessons COVID-19 pandemic has taught us will stay with us forever. There's no doubt about that. So um, thank you all for listening and thank you STM College uh, Business Management for you know giving me this wonderful opportunity. I'm happy to take questions if you have. Thank you so much, ma'am. It was really a wonderful session. Uh, we also like to thank you because you shared your own personal experiences and your day-to-day -day, uh, experiences as to how did you find it. So I'm sure this is going to be very useful for all our budding students and participants. Yeah, ma'am, with your permission, we will start off with the question answer session. So students and participants who have joined us right from Google Meet as well as YouTube, kindly use the text box to pin in your questions. And in case you have an question directly to ask our knowledgeable resource person, you can just drop a message saying that you want to ask a question through audio or you can raise your hand like this by clicking on the Google Meet option. That is only for the Google Meet participants. So let us see who's the first question, person to ask the question. So ma'am, till they, uh, till we get some questions, I would really like to start a couple of questions from my end. I'm sure ma'am also is very keen to start it off. Uh, so ma'am, yeah, what, what are the one major benefit? I know you have spoken a lot about a lot of benefits with the usage of technologies. What is one, if I ask you to just tell one most important benefit or uh, the top ranked benefit which we can get from technology, what could that be? the top um it depends on how you are asking me right like if you ask me if i'm talking i would say like talking to my family every day that's like one thing that comes to my mind or you know i want to make sure that with the click of a button i know where everyone in my family is so that's number one if you think ask about from like a work perspective for me i don't have to like you know i i know i can be on my vacation and i can know what is happening with my work so Great. Yeah, so it depends on which perspective you put it on, but yeah, in today's world, I mean, I I don't think we can live without technology. Wonderful. Just to rephrase my question, I was intending to ask from a corporate world itself. So okay, yes, ma'am. So yes, in terms of corporate world, I can be in any part of the world and know what is happening with my project. So that to me is like a big plus. I don't have to be anywhere. I try to disconnect myself when I'm on vacation, but there are times when I have to be available. So it's just good to be like beyond technology and just like confirm that itself like will make my day. So um, I think technology there is very important. So from a work perspective, just like having when you have deadlines or, you know, when you want to make sure the work is getting done, that's where technology plays a world. Wonderful, ma'am. We just have one more question from one of our participants, Mr. Balakrishnan TV, and he quotes his question, tech is highly useful in connections. What could be the flop side or the flip side on your view? He's talking about the con side of the technology part of it. So you have to use it properly. I mean, that is with anything, right? The, you, you cannot misuse it. For example, if you are on LinkedIn and if you have 800 or 1000 connections, that's not going to benefit you in any way. Or if you subscribe to like 200 publications, it's just going to, uh, uh, you know, fill your mailbox and you're not gaining out of that, anything out of that. So instead, just see what you're interested in. 
just make sure that you're looking for exactly what you're looking for. Make sure you read it and gain from it. That's really well answered, ma'am. Thank you so much, Balakrishnan TV. I hope uh, you have uh, got your answer. We also have one more uh, question from our own student, Shweta. Ma'am, uh, yeah, Shweta here. Uh, she quotes, as you told about random coffee, can you tell us more about experience with it? Now, I believe she's trying to tell us to, you know, previously you had more of the physical touch. You used to see people, greet people. You should have the camaraderie amongst you. Right now, because it's online, where you may not have the physical touch, how do you feel the difference between the previous experience and the uh, virtual experience, as you could quote? Of course, it's different. So, for example, when I was in the office, you know, we would meet in the cafeteria, we have different tables, but I would have somebody from a different team sitting on my table. Let's say somebody from an accounting team is or a legal team is sitting on my table and we would have small chats. Now, that same thing on the random, you know, and we would have a colleague or someone who know each other who will introduce you and, you know, you get to talk about like, oh, what's the weather like today? But when the same thing, you are on random chat, it's kind of awkward in the beginning, but you kind of like get to it and be like, oh, you know, how is your day like going? Like you just, you start with like small chats of like, oh, did you see the news today? It's going to look like it's, we are going to have like a very hot weather this weekend. So you start with like, you know, things that you can relate to each other. And then you kind of know, okay, what is this person? Can I, can I talk more to this person or this person doesn't want to talk? So people have different personalities. To be honest, like I've come across like, I met a person, very smart, very, what do you say, like dynamic person, but he didn't want to talk. Like he, I think it was like, he had something, he was getting emails that was bothering him. So he, he didn't want to talk, but it was like, he was, he was it kind of like a forced chat. So I was like, okay, you know, I had to like end it in a way where it was like, it seemed like a good chat, but then, so it really depends on the personalities. So yeah, it's different than meeting online, but meeting in person. But, you know, you can always, like, you you will know what the other person wants. And some, I mean, I have made friends through random chats that I still talk to them now. It, it just didn't end up, like, in a random coffee. Again, thank you so much, ma'am. You've elaborated so beautifully. I'm sure a lot of uh, people are getting motivated to ask more questions. So I'm, I'm sure you're going to enjoy this session. Uh, we have a question from another uh, student of ours, Akash Pai. He has a question on what is multi-regional meeting. I believe he wanted to quote more on how is an experience of having a multi-regional meetings where people from all over the globe with different languages, different minds, mind uh, perspectives, uh, cultures uh, have a meeting together. How is the experience all about? It's definitely good. See, end of the day, we are connected. Like the people, so everyone speaks English for one. So it's definitely there. And then what happens is sometimes you talk about projects, right? Like, so you you have like something, you have a common topic that you have to talk about. But then when it came to like um, having, what do you call like social events, we had like icebreakers or we would have like a topic of like, oh, okay, have your Zoom backgrounds today. The theme is so-and-so. So somebody would put like a background and then we would start conversation about it. Okay, why do you have that Zoom background? Like if I put something about, I don't know, like um, Tanir Bavi Beach, for example. And somebody would ask, hey, can you tell me something about your background? What, what is that? And I would like talk about, oh, this is from my hometown. You know, this is blah, blah, blah. I would go there every like Sunday. I would meet my cousin. So there's like a story to it. That's how you get connected. And that's how you learn culturally about each other. So that's how we would connect with our global teams. That's great. On a social aspect. Yeah. Wonderful. Actually, even that was a very wonderful question. Even for us to just have a view about it and visualize as to how the real challenges would be and how we could, you know, face it. Ma'am, we have three to four more questions. So with your permission, I'll quickly go on yeah. to that. Uh, we have uh, Syed Mohammed Muhib here. He says, he asks a question. Ma'am, can you share the major impact that has taken place in the corporate world due to COVID other than the technology part? So he's basically trying to say, Leave aside technology, what other major changes are, according to you, ma'am? Well, the other change is definitely the corporate. Every company went through a hardship during COVID, right? There were layoffs that were happening. They thought that, oh, our year this year is going to be wonderful. It's going to be a great year. And suddenly COVID comes and they're like, they're, people are like out of jobs. People don't have spending capacity. So now it's this, it's kind of like a recession happening here where 
you don't have you thought that your business would go in a certain way but it's now going on the opposite direction now we have to start cutting cost and this happened across everywhere and that's why people were losing jobs and so that was like one of the things that happened outside technology if you ask me from like um uh the changes that happened in the corporate world and one more thing that's happening is like that was like kind of a negative side of it the positive side of it if you look at is like more and more companies are going remote now they got rid of their leased offices they said hey if we can get these people do the work and be more productive staying home why even come to the office so they got rid of the offices and there's no nothing anymore that says like hey come to the office and work you can work from anywhere so not not all companies are doing that but some companies are definitely doing it yes thank you so much ma'am and thank you sayed for the question we have one more question from the youtube point of view uh, atik says uh, ma'am you said you uh, to have as many mentors as possible now can you tell us what is the right way to choose a mentor that's, that's a wonderful question again okay so uh, that's a very good question so what kind of mentors to have so for example the you have to be comfortable with your mentor and you have to be ready you don't want to go to a person if you are struggling with something let's say you don't want to go to a person who will say oh you are so nice and don't worry it's fine and blah blah, blah. you don't want to hear good in that way that person is not actually helping you you should go to a person who will tell you hey you are doing everything wrong if you want to fix this you need to do 1 2 3 so you, that that is how you you want to choose your mentor and the other thing is like for example you are very confused on you don't know what you want to do in life so in that case you should go to somebody like reach out to like a like a person who is who is experienced in like a corporate world or banking or even educator like go and ask for their life experience hey i'm feeling this way because trust me everyone at some point goes through that and so they they can help you or guide you and say this is natural you need to do these things or they can point you to some other person and say you need to talk to so and so because so and so knows your industry or knows your subjects better than i do so for example see, uh, dr seema can relate to this i had a friend's daughter who reached out to me and she said i don't know what subjects i should take and honestly like i do i know the subjects in the graduation like bcom or law has changed a lot since i graduated and i told her hey i kind of guided her on what she should do but i said on what subjects you should take or what the best combination these days you should talk to dr seema because she is a director of the institute and she knows what what are the subjects like that are being taught today so you are and she reached out to dr seema and this is a 17 year old girl who reached out to me so that's why reach out to people like it you cannot be it's not like you know it's not like finding a match for your wedding like oh i met this girl i like her i'll go get married to her it's not that it's just like you have to find the right person till you get your answers i hope that answers your question <laughs> i think the smiles and the nods and a lot of thumbs up answers to that i'm sure uh, the, that answered uh, the question again ma'am we have lot of question i think you already motivated the students right i know it's evening there so kindly bear with us no, i'm yeah. fine it's only 10 pm and you know okay. i'm prepared for this so it's wonderful fine. i think we can stretch it and, for and, and let me tell you i am enjoying this as much as you are i hope so so but i'm definitely enjoying this <laughs> wonderful i'm sure all the participants are also i think we can stretch to 5 to 10 minutes more ma'am so i'll just quickly go to the next one karthik one of our mba students asked a question Uh, he, he says uh, what are the major benefits of technology and how we can use it in a day to day life so i meant i mean he might have meant to say that you know there are a lot of technologies here how we could use one or two maybe uh, to help us in a day to day life okay so i know all of you use instagram whatsapp facebook for sure right like i there's no doubt about it so dip see instead of like being on instagram and like for hours and hours a day I would highly encourage you get it, get on like resources like LinkedIn or just Google on a topic that you want to like you are passionate about or you want to learn and start reading articles about it or listen to podcast. YouTube has so many podcast. I myself use make use of a lot of those when I'm driving or you know if something that something something new publication came and I'm too lazy to read it, I just listen to it. There are audio books. So make use of technology on what what interests you and go from there 
that's that's really nice even i want to add to that definitely when we as teachers we constantly get a lo lot of wealth on the internet it's up to us as to how do we make use of our time i totally yeah. agree on that thank you ma'am we have one more question from uh, niratya kamath how do you manage to organize virtual team events so is there any particular checklist or the major things which we need to do before we have uh, this virtual team events uh, covering different uh, Uh, nations yes. yes so one thing is time is very important like you don't want to waste anyone's time and make sure that everyone is so the way we have been doing it is like we send google surveys we give like four or five options and send it to the team and say hey what would you like would you like a virtual like i told you we had a chef from italy who did like a cooking event we all cook pastas um and i should tell you making rotis is harder than making pasta <laughs> so so we so everyone wanted to do that and then the next time and somebody else wanted to next time we had a magic show but then the survey went again and people said oh we didn't enjoy the magic show we don't want magic shows anymore so you kind of like go through you ask what people want and what people are expecting like you give a question like hey what are you expecting at the end of the event you want like something more educational or professional coming out of this or do you want it more connection connecting socially with the person with from this event so you kind of get sent like surveys and i know google has this nice way of like google sending a google survey so that's a good way to like organize things that way you know what people what interests people and then after that you can like manage on how you're going to manage the time and bring some fun into it and maybe make teams make breakout sessions and then also if you want to see how you want to pair the people together ask about their interests like hey what's your favorite movie what's your favorite what do you do outside of work or outside of like you know if you're not in school college so you ask them what their interests are and then you pair these people who have similar interests so that they have you know you can't put like a very introvert person and a very extrovert person together in a virtual world it's hard because i have dealt with that i am a very talkative person and dr seema will laugh at this <laughs> she knows i can't shut up so and i can't deal with like a very introvert like i don't want to be doing all the talking i want somebody else to talk to to make me shut up so that's how you kind of organize you want to know about how people are and i'm not saying being introvert is bad that's a whole different thing you can put they have their own strengths and you know it's just a personality thing so so yeah so getting to know what interests people and what kind of people want to be together the team event so that's how you organize things wonderfully put ma'am really nice to hear it we have a lot of questions so participants in the next 5 minutes we are going to wind up the question answer session so kindly bear with us so if you want your question to be answered please pin in right now itself so we have ismail here one of our mba student itself he says ma'am more technology or online things lead to stress how to overcome it again a very good question disconnect like if you are if you think you are online too much you need to get rid of few things like i myself i disable my facebook account sometimes for like an entire week so that i go to bed at 11 but before i know it's 12 30 because i'm browsing things that i don't care about like i'm not gaining anything out of it so you just need to see what's important for you just disconnect yourself from the things that you don't need and you should do it it's it's hard it's tempting and i know these apps always go like oh are you sure like do you want to get notifications do you they start um, you know pushing you towards that but you have to make like a real attempt of like what's important for you that's a very good answer again ma'am that that is nice again we have kartik here uh, asking ma'am judging competitions online is it easy or difficult so using technology right now so previously students used to go to fest face to face uh, question answers and all this to happen now through this online virtual do you think it's going to be easy or going to be tough that's his question well to be honest i haven't judged anything okay. <laughs> so i think i can answer to that so, yeah you should answer that that's right? one so don't worry it's not the same feel yet but again we need to come up with more creative ways as to how to engage uh, this competition through the virtual because there are pros and cons for both so that is the point kartik so meet me later kartik i'll give you more ideas <laughs> all right so yeah going on uh, s kima muttanna she is again a first year student is online working as stressful or relaxing i think it's connected a bit with the previous question 
on the stress part of it yes ma'am so yes like you heard me initially it was stressful because you know we we even being in the office we were on zoom calls it wasn't like we were only glued to our desk and laptops and working there we've had zoom calls but a lot of things happened with the whiteboarding just talking to each other just being like in a room together now if you have even a small thing you want to get on the zoom and like you want people to be constantly answering you so in the beginning it was stressful but i think we all learned it how to work together and we have something called slack where it's like a chat channel so we have like channels there where we go in like and put information so that nobody needs to get you know on zoom and be talking about something so yes be working remote is hard uh, or being on technology is stressful all day but it has its own pros i don't have to get ready to go to the work every day in the morning or commute that would be like an hour for me and then you know i would stress out to get pick up my kids and take them to the classes so you're saving like time there where you can utilize that for other things so it has its own pros and cons it depends on what works best for the team like i went to the office i went into the office yesterday because i wanted to see my um office colleagues and we all decided to go in and it was good because we were working we are working on a project and we wanted to like whiteboard and just sit and talk face to face versus like sometimes it's hard on zoom or you know i can't whiteboard in something so it it, it depends on it depends on circumstances i would say a great ma'am i think questions are just pouring in so <laughs> i will okay, i'll, I'll take two, i'll take maybe one or two more and then uh Perfect. Right, yeah. ma'am. So I'll just try to just uh, filter some of the questions. So participants uh, will get back uh, to all of your questions a little later. I'll just try to choose one or two. So there is one question here. What are the top five skills immediately transferable to your new career? So I believe they are trying to ask what are the top five most uh, sought after skills which can be used uh, in a corporate world. Are you talking about myself or are you talking like like uh, to to all um, of you? You can have both if you want. First with yourself. and okay next maybe so, the yeah sure so the skill set that what helped me was i have worked in like even though i worked in tax i have worked in different stream i've used different systems and i know the connection with how accounting comes into tax how tax is um, you know works with legal so a company is not successful just because you are working in a slide silo in your own department you need to know how the whole system works and what the dependencies are that's how you kind of like grow in the organization and then you see and there's it's a continuous learning it's not just like oh i'm done i i did all these i have masters in blah 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 so i'm like done with this no it's always a continuous learning in fact i got a email today saying that hey why don't you do a six sigma black belt it's not like a karate in any way it's <laughs> it's it's a way to how to see how you work with teams so there's always like new things and i mentioned about altrix the smart there's always like new technology that comes so what skill set helped is having wide understanding of and working in different um teams and different parts of the team definitely helped me to see what i want and where i want to go that definitely helped and again connections i make sure that i talk to everyone and it may not be just from my team if i get introduced like to someone i want to know what they're doing and how they're doing it and where what they did before that and what's changed for them so i want to know the connections definitely help there definitely mentorship i i can i want to do 100 things and then i go to my mentor hey i want to do this 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 and, and then the mentor tells me see if you go this path you are going to have a road block of this if you do this this is going to be a road block so so you kind of need guidance uh that's number 3 so get guidance and that is my skill set like i always ask for guidance no matter what it is it can be anything it can be even putting my son in a soccer class i i will ask two parents on what their experience has been so it's kind of like getting guidance on various different things and uh the other thing is being organized and being you know committed uh dedication so that's definitely when i do something i try to put give 100% to something so that definitely helps and that also helps with like a career move like you world is very small people you can go on somebody's linkedin and see who their connections are and you can go and say hey i so and so has applied for my company like what do you think like so and so john wants to join my team it's not just because you want to do something people will come and take you you have to have a good reputation so 
that definitely helps. Um, what else? So yeah, those are the things that I can like think of right now. Maybe a beautiful smile. That's one of the most <laughs> important things. <laughs> so yeah, your and for face. you, what? Your ever smiling face. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, that's what I can think of. And then for you, like I said, like always invest, like for the students, I always say, hey, just don't think that just because you are a finance student or you're a marketing student, you have to go that route, like explore, like, you know, we are in a virtual world right now. You can reach out to like anyone that you know and say, hey, I want to know what you do. Can I shadow you or can I just do like a project for free? Like just do it for fun. And for all you know, you might really like it and you want to take that route. So try new things, take risk. So it's okay. Like it's okay if you fail, it's not end of the world. And you know, there is, I mean, when I did my master's in US, I had classmates who were in their forties or fifties coming to and doing a master. There's no age for learning or trying out something new. So always try something, always ask questions. Don't be afraid of failing. And, uh, and you know be energetic you have all the time in the world you guys are like so young you don't have to deal like us like you know take care of the kids and make meals and all that so just you make use of like the fun college life and you know make use of the time that you have in your hand so that's what i would um, recommend that's great ma'am so we'll have one final question one from our participant here uh, miss shaila kamath uh, she's asked the question how can we make classes more interesting through online session so uh, she's from a teaching point of view, she's trying to tell. So maybe you could just give her an overall general uh, feedback now. Yes. Okay. So maybe have fun, fun things put in your like, you know, day to day, like instead of being listening to the lecture for the entire hour, try to make it fun, like put like icebreakers or spend like first five minutes of the class just talking generally or come up with something like choose a topic that, you know, what everyone wants to like choose a topic of the day or even a week or something that is outside of your class and try to like share that with your um, with your uh, friends or you know make presentations that way you are learning how to be a speaker and how to present it can be any topic it can be like movies it can be like anything you are setting up yourself to be like future leaders so that's how you can make fun i mean have make your classes fun Definitely, ma'am. So thank you so much for all the participants for asking all the questions. Sorry, because of the paucity of time, we cannot uh, ask all of these questions. And also thank you, ma'am, for answering each of these questions in a very uh, gracious manner. Ma'am, please stay with us. Sure. Now we would like to uh, share a video citation for you. I hope you really like this, ma'am. We have uh, created with a lot of love and affection to each of our resource persons and participants kindly look into this video. It's a mark of respect we are giving to our resource person. And as soon as the video is done, it's just a one minute video. We are going to share the Google uh, feedback forms to all the participants. Make sure you fill it within five minutes once it's posted. It will be posted on Google Meet, on the text box, as well as on YouTube. So here goes the video. Hope you like it. Yeah, thank you. On behalf of SDM College of Business Management Postgraduate Center for Management Studies and Research, Mangalore, we take this opportunity to acknowledge Ms. Prithvi Pai with pride for sharing your valuable thoughts on COVID-19, staying connected in the virtual world. On 8th of October 2021 and enlightening young minds with your words of wisdom, your virtual presence and intellect helped magnify our event in the most meaningful way. Thank you Ms. Prithvi Pai, who is working as Tax Operations and Technology Senior, Uber, USA. We wish you the best in all your future endeavors. Thank you so much. This is amazing. Thank you. I'm really honored. Our pleasure, ma'am, from SDM family itself. So we were very happy to, you know, do this all put together with a lot of ideas from our students and our 
director and our uh, colleagues itself so ma'am let me just officially send a vote of thanks before that my, my dear participants you have uh, received the google form feedback on the google meet text box as well as on the youtube kindly click on it and you will be given 5 minutes time to fill it up so while you do that i would like to officially give a official vote of thanks first and foremost to our dynamics resource person despite being so late in the evening there with lot of energy lot of wisdom she has shared with us so miss prithvi pai thank you so much ma'am for making time and being here amongst us thank you so much let us all thank virtually you. clap we should reach usa yeah <laughs> right. and thank you should keep smiling Yes, and, and thank all. you, thank you all, uh, and also good luck to everyone. And I hope I can, I will come and see you personally when I visit Mang. I always meet Dr. Seema, so I'll make sure this time I'll come to our okay. institute. Yes, ma'am, we will be very <laughs> happy you. to host you. Thank you so much. I also like to thank our, our dynamic director, Dr. Seema Ishanoy, ma'am, for organizing this session. So again, a virtual clap, please. Also, thank you, Dr. and Tom also special thanks to Dr. Pramila as well. Because uh, she's been very helpful, and I'm sorry that I messed up her <laughs> for point, the Google link the first time. But uh, no, 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 that, absolutely, absolutely fine. fine. This is the cons of the technology world. <laughs> so don't worry about it. We are looking only at the pros. So, ma'am, right. thank you for uh, adding her name because that was next uh, person in my list to thank. So, I'd like to thank Dr. Pramila Shetty, the faculty coordinator for this international e conference. Thank you, ma'am. Also, like to thank all my colleagues, my students. and last but not the least all the wonderful participants who have joined us and also the ones who have asked questions so thank you one and all who have directly or indirectly been part of this particular program so thank you one and all uh, dear participants kindly stay on the technical session 2 will continue on the same link in just few minutes so thank you so much and thank you prithvi ma'am